and uh, worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for being so good to allow us to come into your house of prayer. I pray, God, your blessings upon those that stand in need of a touch from the Master's hand. I pray as we worship together that uh, you will certainly uh, anoint the message and just be in our midst to provide that touch to our heart that we certainly need. And we'll give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Brother Steve, come lead us. Okay, if you will, take your hand and we'll turn to page 608. comes. Praise God. Uh, as we continue our series of studies that we started uh, last Wednesday evening, Growing Spiritually, I would invite you to take your Bibles and turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I want us to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We'll be looking at verse number 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 1. The Bible says here, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Praise God for the reading of His precious word. Let's pray. Father, as we come into Your presence, we thank You so much for Your precious Word. And God, we ask that You uh, bless it as we look at it and uh, study it for just a few moments. Have Your way in our study, and we'll give You thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of this particular session of study is uh, sharing the truth of God's Word. Sharing the truth of God's Word. I don't know about you, but I believe that it's really important that we call ourselves back to the Bible. Now somebody would probably say, but preacher, we've not left the Bible. Well, the Bible stays on shelves too much. We need to pick them up and use them. Amen? Today, all over the world, the Bible has been relegated, in a sense, to 
place second fiddle to everything else. And I got to thinking about that today, and uh, I got to thinking about all those things that we worship instead of God, the God of the universe. Oh, we say that we worship Him, but all of those things that we really love, it seems to have been taken away from us in a sense. I love high school football. I wonder if we're going to have any this year. I love college football. I wonder if we're going to have any this year. I'm not too fond of professional sports, but uh, now they're arguing about whether or not to start a baseball season. You see, all of these things that we get so wrapped up in, could it be that maybe God has stopped those things where we can spend a little more time getting wrapped up in something like the Word of God that we should have been wrapped up in all along? I mean, think about that for just a moment. It's sad, but you can go to a lot of churches today. I'm glad I, I don't have to say that about ours. But you can go to a lot of churches today and, and, and never hear anything at all about the Bible. Oh, they may read a verse of Scripture, but then they talk about everything but what the verse of Scripture had to say. So we need to share the truth of God's Word. I'm glad to say that I believe that we preach the book. I do. I believe that we preach the book. I believe that we teach the book. Now, unity is good. I, I love unity. I like it when we all are of one mind and one accord. Don't you? I like unity. Uh, Psalm 133, uh, you read these words, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. So I believe that unity is important. But now, you know, love, love is grand. 1 Corinthians 13, 3, Now abideth faith, hope, charity. Of course, charity is love. The greatest of these is love. Peace is a glorious thing. All of these uh, things are glorious and they're good to have. I, I'm glad that the peace of God passes our own understanding. But let me tell you something. It's nothing but fake if we don't wrap it up in the Word of God. I mean, it's just putting on a, a, a false front to say that I love somebody and, and don't let my actions speak louder than my words. I mean, if you love somebody, you ought to let your actions show them that you love them. Now, God's Word is important. We, we looked at it last week and we talked about it just a little bit about how God's Word is inspired. But as I continue this, I want us to look at some other aspects of what we need to do in sharing God's Word. Uh, to start, first of all, you've got to realize that God's Word is a living book. This book that I hold in my hand is a living book. The Bible says that it is a living book. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12, the Bible says, For the Word of God is quick, and powerful. That word quick means alive. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit, joints and marring the discerner to the start of uh, the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So the, it is a living book. God's Word knows what we're thinking about today. God's Word knows what we're planning or what we're proposing. God's Word reads our heart today if we're a child of God. You remember last week we gave you a text, I believe, of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, where the Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and we learned what it was profitable for. For doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. But to go a step further, let's look at 2 Peter chapter uh, 1, verse tw uh, 21. Listen to what the Bible says here. It says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved on by the Holy Ghost. So, we learned that while man may have had a part in the pinning and the jotting down of the Scripture, that 
It was anointed or God breathed. It was God breathed. So the Bible is as old as time, but yet it is as new as tomorrow. Did you catch that? It is as old as time, but it is as new as tomorrow. As sure as night follows day, or a day follows night, God still lives and the Bible is still right. Now there are people today who will try to tell you that the Bible is an old dusty book that needs to be put on a shelf somewhere and forgotten about. But I say no. It's a book for today. It's a book that needs to be read. It's our roadmap for living. It's our GPS system for living in this modern time. Uh, it's a living book. It's alive. Uh, men spent their lifetime searching the world for truth. They've, they've looked everywhere. Some men have tried to find truth in a medicine bottle. Some men have tried to find truth in an alcohol bottle. Some men have tried to find truth in, in, in working. Some men have tried to find truth in wealth. Some men have tried to find, and the list can go on and on and on. And they'll just tell you that we can't find happiness. It's because they've not found the truth. And this Bible, and the God of this Bible, is absolutely the truth. Friend, listen, men spend lifetimes searching the world for truth. And they overlook the very source of their quest. I hold in my hand the truth of the living God. So God's Word is a living Word. Secondly, God's Word moves freely. God's Word moves freely. Now in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse number 1, uh, and I'm not going to read the Scripture again, but, but, but it basically tells us that, that uh, the Word of the Lord, in the Word of the Lord, that we may have freedom, a free course. The Word of God has a free course. Now in the 147th Psalm, in verse 15, the Bible says, His Word runneth very swiftly. But when you're going through a hard time, and you're a child of God, and, and you're going through a very troubled time in your life, all of a sudden, God brings to mind a precious scripture that means a lot to you. Does it bring peace to your heart? Does it help you through a troubled time? I believe with all of my heart that it does. It's like lightning. I went outside yesterday for a few moments just to watch the rain. I'm so happy that we got some rain because it had gotten so dry. And I was sitting on my little back porch. And I was enjoying watching the rain. And all of a sudden, boom! Thunder. And a big old bolt of lightning shot across the sky. Boy, I got myself in the house in a hurry. <laughs> Didn't take me long to get in the house. But I'm going to tell you the Word of God is just like that streak of lightning that flashed across the sky. In an instant, it can move. God's servant may be bound. God's servant may be restricted. God's servant may be restrained. But God's Word runs freely. Friends, it runs freely. Uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9, Listen to what the Bible says here. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer even unto bonds, but the Word of God is not bound. Paul said that. The Word of God is not bound. I mean, he was locked in shackles. He was in, in a prison. And he says, the Word of God is not bound. The servant of God may be restricted, but the Word of God is not bound. This wonderful book has climbed every mountain there is to climb. I used to love to go to Screamer Mountain in Clayton, Georgia. Kind of the highest mountain in Clayton. 
close to being the highest. Maybe Brasstown ball on over there, and then of course they, they may be a little bit higher, but uh, Screamer Mountain was a beautiful mountain, and right on the top of that mountain, there used to be a cross that they lighted up every night. They moved it now. I don't know where they moved it to. It's still up somewhere over there, but, but they moved it to a different mountain. But uh, we had some friends that had a condominium right on the very top of Screamer Mountain. And we uh, were invited several times to stay in their little place, and we'd go up there and spend several days in their place, and we'd walk around the, the, the side of that mountain to get to the cross. And there's been many times that I knelt at the foot of that cross on top of Screamer Mountain. And I'm going to tell you something. I felt like the Holy Ghost of God was just hugging me. I could feel the Spirit of God. Listen, I feel the Spirit of God now, but there's just something special in just kneeling at the foot of that old cross on top of that mountain. I'm going to tell you the Word of God has climbed every mountain. The Word of God has crossed every ocean. The Word of God has sailed every sea. It's made it access across every desert. The dust didn't bother it at all. Uh, it's been in the grave, it's been in the dungeon, it's been in prison, but thank God it still lives today. It is the living Word of God and it moves swiftly into our hearts and into our lives. Now, there's been many times that people tried to do away with the Word of God. An atheist by the name of Voltaire made the statement that one day the Bible would be a dusty old book in a museum somewhere. You know, I hate to say it, but he was partially right. It's not a dusty old book in a museum, but it is a dusty old book in many homes. Amen? Some people never pick it up. And we live in a very fortunate time because uh, some people tote tablets around and they go open their Bible from their tablet. Some people read their Bible from a computer screen. Some people just mashes a little button and has somebody to read their Bible to them, and that's good. But there's just something special to me about tangibly holding a Bible. You know, I at one time decided that I was going to be uh, one of these uh, uptown modern preachers. I was going to start using a tablet. So I bought me one of them things. And I outlined my sermon and just critiqued it and had it perfect. And the church I got to didn't have no Wi-Fi. But I was all right because I had it all downloaded. So I, I don't know why, but God spoke to my heart and said, you might want to take your Bible with you. And so I took my Bible with me. And I got up in that pulpit, left my Bible out there with the wife. I got up in the pulpit, opened my tablet, and I mashed the button. For everything to come on, but it didn't nothing come on. So I walked out there and I got my Bible from my wife. And I went back up to the pulpit and I preached from my Bible. I've never tried to be a technological type preacher anymore. Now that's not to criticize technology or to talk about anybody that can do that. But there's just something precious to me about holding this Bible in my hands. It's a good book. Now, as we continue, uh, I want you to see that God's Word is also glorified. It is a glorified Word. Now, I want to say this to you right now. I do not worship this book. Please understand what I'm saying. I don't worship this book. This book is not my God. 
But this book is full of my God. <laughs> you understand where I'm going with that? I do not worship the Bible. We worship the subject of the Bible. Amen? I'm talking about when I, when, when I begin to think about the subject of the Bible, there's 66 books that's brought together by the Holy Spirit of God and has as its subject matter, listen, the Lord Jesus Christ. All 66 books. If you look from Genesis to Malachi, you'll find Jesus. And if you look from Matthew to Revelation, you'll find Jesus. Jesus is what this book is all about. God is revealing Himself as Jesus Christ through this precious book. The bloodstains of Christ are on every page. All the Bible is Jesus. He is the living Word. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God and the Word was with God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. John chapter 1 Verse 1, 2, and verse 14. Friends, He is the living Word of God. Now, this is the written Word of God. It is the only thing that God... Listen, now listen to this. I want, to, I want to give you something that shocked me whenever we were putting this study together. Do you know that this is the only thing that God elevated above His own name? Did you know that? Boy, I didn't really know that. And when we were putting this together, it blew my mind. Psalm 138, verse 2. Listen to what the Bible says. I will worship toward thy holy, team, or holy temple, and I will praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Why? Because thy word is truth. The word of God is the supreme authority. There is no appeal beyond the scripture. There is no higher source of authority than the word of God. There are no laws that can be passed. No proclamations that can be made. No appeal beyond. There is no authority higher than the Word of God. Now there are those who think they are. The Word of God holds a higher authority than the President of the United States. The Word of God holds a higher authority than the Queen of England. The Word of God holds a higher authority than any earthly kingdom will ever hold. It is a powerful Word. There's no appeals beyond this. The rich man in hell learned that. He asked Abraham to send Lazarus with just one drop of water to cool his parched tongue. And then he said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus back so that He can testify to my brothers so they won't come to this awful place. So he, they, he can share the Word with them so that they won't have to come to this awful place. And of course, Father Abraham said to him, they've got the prophets. But Lord, they won't listen to the prophets. But if you'll send one back from the dead, they'll listen to him. I think sometimes that's what people are looking for today. But now listen to me. There's one that spoke to, that spoke to us who come back from the dead. Jesus Christ. Up from the grave He arose. Amen? With a mighty triumph for all His foes. He lives today. And we have a lot to be thankful for. So we need to get back to the Word of God. Uh, the Word of God informs. Now there's some books that uh, tries to reform, but only the Bible can inform and then transform. Did you catch that? It informs us about Jesus. 
And when we believe Jesus, it informs us of Him, but then it transforms our lives. So we need to get back to the basics. We need to get back to the Bible. We need to get back to preaching uh, the Bible. We need to get back to living the Bible. We need to get back to, to doing our best to do what the Bible tells us to do. Walk the way the Bible teaches us to walk. And then the last thing that I want you to see in this as we grow spiritually is that the Word of God separates. God's Word must be used to separate good men from evil men. Now, in uh, verse 2, look at verse 2. And they, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. So, in verse 2, Paul said that all men don't have faith. God uses good men to do good things. Satan uses evil men to do evil things. Man, we look at all that's going on in our country today, and we think that uh, it's uh, one race versus another race. But it's not about race. This thing that's going on in our country today is a spiritual battle. It's good fighting evil. And evil fighting good. This is a spiritual battle that we're in. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. That's where we are. That's what we're warring against is powers and principalities. I tell people the Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But you see, according to which side you find yourself on, the devil knows how to use flesh and blood. Did you hear what I just said? The devil knows how to use flesh and blood. But we're in a spiritual battle. Uh, here's the tragedy. Some good people allow Satan to use them to oppose the work of Christ. Did you hear what I just said? It's sad, but true. The Apostle Peter allowed the devil to use him to oppose the work of Christ. When Jesus says, Who do men say that I am? They began to answer and He said, Whom do you say that I am? Peter said, Thou art the Son of the living God. Boy, he was right on target with that when he said that. But can you imagine that happening? Peter taking the Son of God and the Son of God rebuking him whenever he said Oh, you're not going to wash my feet. You're not going to wash my feet. And whenever he said that uh, Jesus was not going to die, that he would go to battle for him, Jesus rebuked the very man that called him Jesus, the Son of the living God. Christ rebuked him not because of Peter, but because Satan that had given him words to say. Be careful, little mouth, what you say. Think about what you say before you say it. Because you certainly don't want Satan to use your mouth to cause harm to anyone. Amen? And so we've got to be careful. Uh, good people get upset sometimes and leave the church. They oppose the work of Christ. Good people give up serving because things don't happen the way they want them to happen. They oppose the work of Christ. Good people get into financial problems and quit giving because they've got to pay their bills and so they oppose the work of Christ. Good people believe the lies of the world and the devil rather than trusting the precious Word of God. So they oppose the work of Christ. Listen, don't let us ever get caught up in that. Being a good person that opposes the work of Christ. God's Word is alive. It is a living Word. It moves freely. It has supreme authority in our lives. And it will separate good from evil. God's Word must be used to do God's work. It is foolish for us to try to do the work of God without the Word of God because it just won't work. If we're going to grow spiritually, we've got to reach a place that we allow God's Word to live in us, to speak through us. 
I always tell people this, the greatest way for God to be able to use you like you would like for Him to use you is to empty yourself of self so that God can then fill you with Himself. Less of me, O Lord, more of you. You remember the words of John the Baptist? I must decrease. He must increase. That is a must. We've got to empty ourselves of pride and everything else so that we can be all that God would have for us to be. If we're going to grow spiritually and be everything that God wants us to be, we've got to empty ourselves of self and be filled with the living Word of God, the Holy Spirit, and get yourself in the written Word. Write some of the Bible on the tablets of your heart. I wish that I could tell you that I can memorize a lot of Scripture. I have a lot of Scripture in my head and in my heart, but I don't have nearly enough. Write some Scripture on the tablets of your heart so that if by chance your Bible were to be taken away, they can't take it off your heart. It'll always be there. i tell you this story in closing. I walked into a man's house one time who couldn't even speak anymore. But he loved God with all of his heart. Lived for the Lord all his life. His wife looked at me and said, I just don't understand why the Lord let him get into this condition. And I said, how are you? I said, are you sure that the Lord let him get into this condition? I said, you've loved him and you've taken care of him. He couldn't even get out of a bed. We circled that bed and we started praying. And the old man's hands began to raise. He began to praise God. You know why? Because he had written the tablets of his heart was filled with the Word of God. While the devil may have stolen his voice, he couldn't talk anymore. Stolen as much of his mind away, he couldn't touch his heart because he was still full of Jesus. Wasn't long before the Lord called him home. You know, the only thing that I want this world to remember about me when I'm gone his old Danny was full of Jesus. He loved Jesus. He loved Jesus. Any comments? Father, thank you for your word. Bless it to our hearts. And help us to write it on the tablets of our heart. To read it. To study it. To get something from it every day not just on Wednesday and Sunday but to get something from it every day in Jesus name Amen remember the service is Sunday morning at 1030 God bless you